Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be going over some of your guys' questions while I pack up over 100 orders. As you can see here, this is TikTok shop, and I'm literally so happy that they created what's called a manifest. So basically, I used to have to have every single package get scanned in by USPS because they have a very strict three-day shipping policy. So now, if I'm getting close to that three days, I can basically create a single barcode or USPS to scan and that will scan in each and every one of those packages. So it's literally so helpful and it helped a ton. I actually had to close my shop for a little bit just to get caught up, but now I am. And while I was doing that, I filmed some behind the scenes footage for you. So if you're ready, let's get into your questions. I feel like this is a good question to start off with since I know there's probably a lot of people out there that don't necessarily know my story or how I became a henna artist. So Basically, about a little over 11 years ago, I got henna done for my wedding. I got married at a Radha Krishna temple here in San Diego, and if some of you guys don't know, I practice a branch of Hinduism called Gaudiya Vaishnavism, basically centered around Radha Krishna worship. And so, you know, I had my bridal mendy done, absolutely loved it, and about two months later, my husband and I, we went on our first pilgrimage trip to India, visiting all the holy sites, and uh, it was actually in Vrindavan, which is a few hours south of Delhi, that I got my first henna cone and I started practicing on myself. And I was immediately hooked. Now, mind you, I was actually doing cake decorating prior, so it is very similar to that. It's kind of funny, I actually really don't like uh, baking and so just doing like the henna on myself it was honestly the best thing ever I was obsessed and as soon as I got back I had you know friends family members you know a lot of people from the temple that wanted to get it from me and so honestly it was just a very natural transition I want to say it didn't feel like it was that hard to basically become a henna artist I mean I was already doing my own thing at the time and so it was just a matter of you know this was bringing me more joy than cake decorating was and so I kind of stopped doing cake decorating pretty soon after I started doing henna and kind of took it as full time as I could basically so yeah that's the story on that I would say for most henna professionals they use fairly similar recipes I mean there can be some variations depending on the type of henna powder usually but basically per 100 grams of henna powder, the ratios are usually around 30 mils of essential oil, either lavender, eucalyptus, tea tree, or kajaput, and then usually 30 to 50 grams of sugar. Some henna powders need more sugar for it to stick on the skin nicely, and in some climates that are really humid, for example, you might not need that much sugar at all. So you will have to kind of play around yourself. And then for the liquid, it's usually approximately 8 ounces of liquid for 100 grams. I mean, this can really vary depending on the henna powder because some henna powders are what I like to call more thirsty, you could say. So they may need more water to reach the same consistency as another henna powder. And that's basically it for the mixing quantities. So I want to say it took a few years for me to find my right mix for henna and that is solely because I started out using Jamila henna powder which is very very different than what I use now which is Rajasthani henna powder. Basically Jamila, the consistency is a little bit more creamy, there's not a lot of string to it so it's not as easy to drape lines with. Um, it tends to break you know as you're draping a line which is why I really love Rajasthani henna powder. But it did take me a few years to get my hands on Rajasthani henna powder and I know some people actually mix the two together So it's kind of like the best of both worlds, but I personally love using Rajasthani henna powder just by itself So I want to say a few years, but it could have been sooner had I tried Rajasthani henna powder earlier in my career but yes, it does take a little bit of experimenting to get the consistency right. You probably will fail some batches, making it either too liquidy or too thick. But over time, you will definitely get that right consistency for you. Because some people, like for myself for example, I love working with a thinner paste and I find with Rajasthani henna powder, it's just like the perfect mix, it's easy on the hands. But for some people, they really prefer to use thicker, you know, they want to do some really thick and bold kind of designs and so a henna powder like Jamila might be better for that. But yeah, it took me a little while, but it doesn't have to necessarily take you as long as it did for me. So I'm going to go ahead 
ahead and link the henna powder that I use in the description if you're curious. So I actually get this question all the time, so I feel like I should answer it and just have it here for you guys. But yes, I do wash them and I reuse them until a hole develops because once that happens, it's kind of pointless to use because you're basically using it to kind of sift out any clumps and if there's a hole, you know, the clumps will just come right through. But basically, I'll actually soak the mixing bowl with the spatulas, nylons, and the mixing paddles in the sink for a little bit and the henna kind of dissolves with that water contact and so I just rinse everything off under running water and then I'll actually turn the nylon inside out just to make sure it's all cleaned and then I'll let it dry and that's it. Honestly, it's just body paint with glue adhesive so it doesn't stain and it comes off rather quickly. So unless it's for a one day event, I think it's kind of a waste of time, but that's just my opinion. I really don't work with it at all since I like the staining effects of henna and hagua much better. Glitter on the wet henna paste is kind of cool, it's fun for parties, and it just lasts until the henna paste kind of falls off, but I usually don't use it myself unless it's for kids. I mean, adults like it too, but I'm just not that much of a fan of it anymore. Um, but yes, if you are going to use it, just make sure that you get eco-friendly glitter. That is my only concern since you know microplastics are a really big thing and you definitely don't want to contribute to that so there could be many reasons why either the henna powder wasn't potent or the essential oils aren't potent or they're synthetic and not pure steam distilled some henna powders don't contain a lot of lawson which is the dye molecule that stains skin especially powders that are marketed more for hair so always look for a triple sifted body art quality henna powder but you also want to make sure you have a high terpene containing essential oils such as lavender, eucalyptus, tea tree, or kajaput. These essential oils are definitely required to get a nice dark color. If you just mix henna powder by itself without any essential oil, it's going to be very light and it's not going to last very long. And you also need the right quantity, as I mentioned earlier, about 30 mils per 100 grams of henna powder. And you also want to try and leave the henna on for as long as possible. So in some cases, you might want to mix lemon juice and sugar together and apply that on the henna when it's dried. And another trick is you can actually steam your henna after by filling a pot with water and waving your hands above it. There's another trick too where you could put cloves on a tava and then wave your hands above that and the steam from the cloves will also make it darker. But another factor is how warm you are. So if it's really cold, you might not get a dark stain either, so make sure that you're nice and warm. And additionally, some medications can cause your stain to be lighter as well, so there's definitely a lot of factors and it just might take some experimenting to find the right combination of elements to get that dark stain. You'll often find that those that practice fine arts like painting will recreate a master's work in order to teach themselves basically different techniques like different brush strokes or compositions and I find that the same thing is very useful for learning henna. So basically find some artists who you think are masters and whose work you really love and just try recreating it. Of course you don't want to claim it as your own original design but there's absolutely no harm in trying to recreate designs line by line in order to teach yourself the fundamentals of design building. You will find that you will learn a lot about the various motifs used in henna art as well as learning how to create aesthetically pleasing compositions, which I find is the hardest part when creating your own work. Most designs are combinations, you know, of lines, dots, grids, and fills, but learning how to piece them all together is the hard part. So if you try recreating at first, over time you will learn the skills that you need in order to be able to take those concepts and create your own unique pieces that are basically wholly you and you'll find your own artistic style. Honestly, it just comes down to time and experience. However, some artists are just naturally slower or faster but speed shouldn't really be the only thing that you focus on. You want to create neat work for bridal especially. I wouldn't really worry too much on how fast you're going, but try practicing bridal designs on paper or on acrylic hand, and if you could do that often enough and challenge yourself to work really fast, then this kind of practice can really help you train yourself to be fast but accurate. I use the CapCut app on my iPhone for all of my short form content and for my long form videos like the one you're watching right now, I use Adobe Premiere. CapCut does have a desktop version as well for longer form videos, but I haven't tried it since I have had Adobe Premiere way before CapCut for my YouTube videos. 
so yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i appreciate you guys being here with me and i did not get to answer every question that i wanted to i think i'm gonna have to just create some more videos going over some of them i feel like quite a few of them deserve their own video by themselves so i'm definitely going to be noting down your questions and hopefully creating more videos surrounding them so yeah let me know if you guys enjoyed this video by leaving a thumbs up and a comment and i will see you guys in the next video